Hi, I'm Plastician and I'm trapped inside a mirror at Juno Bar in Shoreditch. When I get out, I'm going to be chatting about the life and times of Jay Kenzo. Well, here we are in Juno, and I've got a good friend Jay Kenzo. What's happening, sir? You all right? All good, mate. Nice Thanks. to see you again. Very, yeah, it's been a little while since I last seen yeah, you, hasn't it? Been, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, the last yeah. time I seen you in uh, Holland that time. That's right. right. When we, uh, yeah, we both played it that night. Yeah. When we yeah. got there, was uh, we had the sit-down dinner, and we were both knackered. And yeah, that's right. Yeah, and it, I think it's snowing outside as well. Oh yeah, yeah. It was in the casino. That's it, casino. Yeah, that's My right. My memory's not as bad as I thought. It might <laughs> be. So um, let's kick the interview off a little bit about your background, like um, where you grew up and what sort of music you were listening to when you were a yeah. youngster? Okay, um, yeah, basically I grew up in, um, in Kent. Um, I've lived in Kent basically all my life. Um, and uh, growing up, listening to kind of various types of different music. Um, my dad's like, he was a massive music fan and like in the house we had brought up on like various different types. Like, I mean, rare groove, reggae, soul. Um, yeah, a bit of everything really, and that was kind of like my introduction into music. And uh, I can remember my dad sitting there kind of recording these old vinyls onto cassettes and stuff like that, picking out which tunes he wanted to play in the car and stuff. So that's kind of like my first introduction into kind of like, I suppose, doing your own little tapes and kind of being into music and stuff. So um, yeah, I pretty much say without, you know, without my dad, I probably wouldn't be into music. So yeah, it gave me a good kind of introduction. Interesting. So from buying records and becoming interested in music, how did that grow into becoming a producer? Um, well, I started kind of buying records around about 90, I'd say about 93, 94. But before that I was like uh, listening to, there was this compilation, a few compilations that would have like house and hip hop kind of stuff, like hip house they used yeah, to call yeah. it back then. They used to have like Chicago, Detroit house and have MCs on it. And um, I really was into that kind of thing, so a lot of the kind of hip house stuff. And then that moved more into kind of um, like the rave culture that was coming through in the early 90s. And obviously I was like a, an early, in my early teens, so that was new and exciting to me. And uh, the jungle kind of scene exploded and that really kind of took, took me by, you know, that, that was my sound really, because it had, uh, had everything in it really, so. Do you think just it was, soul and rare groove yeah. and hip hop and dub and uh, it kind of exposed me to a lot of new music and there would be stuff that I'd listen to and go, oh, I remember that, oh, I heard that before kind of thing. It was like the introduction of buying vinyl, then getting all your equipment and DJing and playing to people and uh, yeah, it was a bit of a buzz really. I, I enjoyed it and I just kind of, I never thought I would actually make it as a career, you know, it's something I always wanted to do and that was what I mainly set out to do was DJ. And uh, yeah, doing it now is kind of crazy. So your first productions were they dubstep, or was you producing more sort of jungle hip hop or It was kind of. It, it was. It wasn't. Oh, I would say it's dubstep because it was like weird soundscapes over like grind beats. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I say. I didn't even know what it was, but I'd have like ideas in my head. I'd go right. I wanna. I've got an idea of just say like something out of a Star Wars movie. Yeah. I've got an idea of that. I'm gonna make a tune that's gonna sound like that word. I know it sounds a bit crazy, but that's what I used to like try to do. Like a film score with yeah. a drum beat under yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah. Like, uh, yeah, just pick out something like that and, yeah, just put these, like, eight-minute drum beats behind it that no one would ever play, but it's just like, for me, it'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm creating something. Yeah. And it used to go on forever and ever and ever, and I used to think, yeah, I'm doing something great here. <laughs> I'd actually like to hear that now. I think like, oh, you might have an man. album, like, lying on your hard drive, <laughs> yeah. I don't know about. Some yeah. revolutionary, like, back to the future business. <laughs> oh, who knows, mate, who knows. <laughs> so, around about that time that you started making beats, um, you said 2006, which was a massive time for dubstep. Like, that was when the boom really started in the UK. Mm. Um, were you attending the nights back then, and what do you remember about the scene that around about that time? Yeah, I started going to the DMZ nights with the first ones, because I started picking up um, dubstep records kind of like around about 2005, and uh, it was Digital Mystics, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I can remember stuff from Soul Jazz as well, and uh, Tempo, obviously. Um, there were the few early bits that I picked up. Soldier Records, and um, it was kind of interesting because I, you know, I, I never got to experience the Jungle Nights firsthand until I got a little bit older. But then it wasn't like 
how I listened to it on mixtapes and stuff like that when I was a kid. So, it, you know, experiencing the vibes of like DMZ, it was kind of like, yeah, these are the vibes that used to happen back in the day. Exactly, and, you know, yeah. like it was all about music. Like it doesn't matter how you dress, you could, you know, put a pair of shorts on or whatever, you know what I mean? Just go in there and rave it up and get hot and sweaty. And that's what it was more about. It was kind of like the vibe rather than getting kind of off put by you having to look a certain way to be a part of fitting in with the crowd. So when was your first release? First release was um, 2000 and I think 2007. Um, I brought out a digital thing that I had done. I just decided to kind of put out, I didn't have the money to kind of press up my first vinyl. And at that time, like I sent out a few demos, but I kind of realized that, you know, if I wanted to kind of get myself heard a little bit, I'd have to kind of do DIY it really, you know, yeah. kind of put out my own stuff. Um, it wasn't really to make any money at all. It's just kind of get my sound out and say, okay, well, I've got this little project. This is what I'm doing. And uh, the label was Soul Shakers that I started up first. And um, yeah, I've done a little kind of digital release there. And then after that, I got the money together to put out a vinyl release, which was Techno Bass. So it was my first vinyl release and something I'm really proud of. And it was actually Nick Argon who actually kind of motivated me to do that because uh, I was sending a lot of stuff to him which he was playing and he said to me why don't you just kind of bring it out yourself and Matty G done the remix on the other side so and that's you know Matty G was kind of he was blowing up then he mm. was getting really big after the 50,000 watts and all that so yeah yeah mad so then fast forward on a few years and you were picked up by Tempa yeah but I know that um, initially it was Dubplease you were working with wasn't it yeah yeah started working with them guys yeah and it, and did you have a release on Dubplease yeah I had the release on uh, on it was like a, a CD for Cyan a, a project they'd done for Cyan I remember that yeah and they'd done a 12 inch with uh, a track called Constant which mm -hmm. was my track and a subscape track on the other side so I'd done it like a you know a CD and uh, you know and a vinyl one so and then, as we say, you were picked up by Temper, mm. and you've been working with them for, I'm guessing, four years now? It's it? 2011. It was, oh, yeah. so it's not even as much as that? Yeah, well, yeah. Feels yeah. like you've been releasing on Temper forever. Yeah. You've yeah. had a fair few releases on there. Yeah, yeah, I've had quite a few releases now. I've got a few more lined up, so yeah, yeah, I'm really happy with how it's going with Temper, you know, so. What is it that makes your sound so gritty? I would say it's a big use of um, samples. It's kind of going back to the days, like I mentioned before, like the jungle days where they used to sample a lot of stuff and it's getting that original kind of raw material and it's kind of like using that, that that's what I kind of, how I get my sound so kind of like, yeah, kind dirty. of, like, yeah, dirty and gritty and kind of, yeah, just kind of, yeah, that's how I'll, I'll give it a nod back to that, that kind of thing, you know, using the traditional methods of sampling, um, like I used to do in hip hop, you know. So they get the, the drum beats so gritty and stuff like that. So that's for me is the main place I start with my production. So yeah. But um, what is next for you? Have you got plans to write another album or? Yeah, I have. Um, more importantly, I've got the Bloodlines EP. Yes. Which is dropping um, July the 29th. I got sent that through the email. The other yeah. Week. So that's the next thing that's coming out. Um, after that, I'm predicting there'll be another EP towards the end of the year, and then the album early next year. Brilliant. So, yeah. That's so cool. how's that coming on? Have you got tracks that you've hidden away already for the album that you're like yeah. marking for the album? Yeah, I've got ideas that I'm doing. I'm basically kind of like working on like um, little ideas at the moment kind of, of how I want, want it to go, you know. It's going to be a lot more, I suppose like the music that I'm looking to do now is kind of bringing it back, you know, the half step thing yeah, it's great and it's worked well, but bringing a little bit more kind of uh, yeah, two-steppy kind yeah, of style yeah. into it, you know, kind of giving a nod back to kind of like the early kind of garage days as well. So, but still keeping it, you know, like Jake what I do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. So uh, to wrap up the interview, what's coming next from you? What can we expect in the next few weeks to a few months? Um, I've got a uh, couple of gigs at the end of the month. I'm playing in uh, Rotterdam. Um, on the 27th and the 28th, I'll be at Tomorrowlands Festival. Nice. So, um, first time there. It's crazy. So I'll be back to back with Icicle as well. So Sick. That'll be interesting. <laughs> yeah, I got to play there last year on a Wheel and Deal stage that oh, wicked. was hosting. And uh, we took a little wander around the festival and uh, you definitely got to go and have a look at the main stage when you get there. Yeah. I, I couldn't get anywhere near it because when I went to look at it, David Guetta was playing and they wouldn't even let people who are artists 
in the backstage area. It's crazy, isn't it? We were like, no, it doesn't matter what artist you are, yeah, you cannot yeah. be here when David Guetta's playing. But the, the front of the stage, I did manage to get round it, it looked like a giant storybook. Yeah. So God knows what it's going to be this year, but definitely go and look, have a look at it, because uh, that festival is a feast for the eyeballs. It is a, a crazy one. Definitely looking forward to that You'll one, definitely yeah. have fun there as well. They <laughs> like, like, did have a good time on the Wheel and Deal stage yeah, last year. Yeah. Well, Jay Kenzo, I think that just about wraps it up, mate. Brilliant Big stuff. up. Thanks very much nice for, one, brother. Uh, for your time. And no good worries. to see you, mate. Yeah, Take good care. to see you too, mate. Big Take up. care.